Oh, nice one there, Zane. Appreciate it, mate. Apologies there, Chas. Oh, bloody hell. So we start again. How are we, Reds? How are we, Zane? Massive thank you for putting that message in there, lad. I was. That's because I was muted on stream, yeah. The audio thing that I have. But uh, Zane, what are we saying? Reds and uh, Newcastle fans, Tottenham fans, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below on this game. Certainly going to be one for uh, it's Newcastle. You've had a very tricky season, haven't you? Obviously missing out, obviously, in the, the Champions League. Well, this season, it's not exactly what they've wanted. But uh, Ange Potricoglu coming into the Premier League, surprising quite a lot of um, Premier League fans as well. Um, certainly surprised me, as I was saying before, but you couldn't hear me. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Get your start. Well, your, your score predictions in. Sorry, we'll get straight to the start 11s for both sides anyway. Uh, very fastly, quickly approaching kickoff. Um, but it's not with the home side. Uh, Martin Dubravka, obviously, Nick Pope still out injured. He's been a massive miss for them. And um, for Newcastle, obviously, you've got Jacob Murphy, Kraft, Fabian Shaw, Dan Bain. I was speaking about Dan Bain and the quality within this Newcastle side vastly needs to improve going into next season as well. Um, and then going into the midfield, it's 2024 and Longstaff is still playing for Newcastle United. Speak to me, Geordie, mate, this season. And I've just said to them, and being honest, speaking from our honest opinion, it was Liverpool fans. We come on leaps and bounds uh, as soon as Jürgen Klopp did take over. He had to get a, a rid of a lot of dead wood. Newcastle starting 11 is good, but it's not exactly where they want to be as well. Um, for their aspirations as a football club. I think they've jumped ahead of schedule last year um, and they got found wanting in terms of the last stages of this Premier League campaign. All those injuries do compile, do pile up and I know it's absolutely ridiculous the amount of injuries they've had, but let's let's be honest, every single Premier League side, I remember having numerous debates with Newcastle fans over the last couple of years ago saying, oh, Jürgen Klopp's moaning about injuries and all that, but yeah. Newcastle, you found out this season, it's just the scheduling. Newcastle squad, first and foremost, is not good enough for where they want to be. So a lot of investment, a lot of Champions League revenue from this year. Be interesting to see how much they do get and how much they reinvest into next season as well. So it's important it's integral. So you look at Newcastle, I know they've got injuries as well, but Anderson, Longstaff shouldn't be starting for Newcastle United for where they want to be. But they are where they are this season with injuries and all that. Bruno Gramares, very highly talented central midfielder, as we know, adapted to life from to the Premier League very, very well as well. I think it, it, Newcastle have aspirations of wanting to get into the Champions League spots in a regular occurrence. You need to keep hold of Bruno. He, he's integral to exactly what they want to be doing in the Premier League. Um, the attacking line, obviously, Harvey Barnes, Isaac and... Gordon, I think the beginning of the year, if Gordon did continue his trajectory in terms of his form, um, certainly would have been warranted for a, a spot in the Premier League team of the season, um, Gordon. But I think obviously with injuries and a bit of loss of form as well, he's been certainly Newcastle's player of the season. From my honest opinion, he's been absolutely superb in terms of down that left-hand flank. Really took that mantle, big, big transfer fee. Um, and obviously Isaac... Isaac would be one of the best young strikers in world football. He is currently, but I think the one thing that does hinder him is his injuries. Like yeah, a bit like certain strikers we've seen over the last 20 years as well. Like Isaac needs a bit of consistency in terms of just being fit. And I think if he could do that, it'd certainly help um, Newcastle in terms of getting Champions League football on a more regular occurrence. Because you look at Ollie Watkins at Aston Villa as well, you look how important he has been in terms of they've, they've kept him nice and fit. So it is one of them. He's a huge player for Newcastle. Um, going into the Tottenham side as well, Hoi Min Son obviously looks like he's leading the line through the middle. Um, Timo Werner obviously on loan this season from RB Leipzig. Down the left-hand side, that's a mixed bag really this season, as we know with Timo, as is his time in the Premier League when he has played, hasn't quite really adapted. I think he's a bit like Darwin Nunes at the minute in terms of just sometimes when you watch Timo, a bit like when you watch Nunes, you look at him, you're like, how have you missed that, lad? So Madison, he was on fire at the beginning of the year, obviously injuries. Uh, Brennan Johnson as well, very highly talented youngster. I think this lad's going to go very far in the game as well, especially in the Premier League. 
Um, and again, just needs to keep it, needs to keep injury free as well. Um, Bentancourt and Basuma, and then obviously my Premier League left back of the season, Undoggy, um, playing left back. Mickey Van der Ven, highly talented centre half as well. Um, a player that I'd love Liverpool to sign. I think he's got exactly all the qualities to become an elite level centre half. Um, I think the struggle will be if Tottenham don't start getting Champions League football and don't start challenging for for bigger honours, really. I think it's going to be a test to the Ange Potratoglu and obviously Tottenham to really keep hold of these players. But Mickey van der Ven, he's destined to be one of the best centre-halves in Europe if he can just continue developing. He's, 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 I'd love him at Liverpool. He's, he's exactly what we need, pace, power. His reading of the game is phenomenal as well. Uh, Romero, obviously, World Cup winner, speaks for himself. Just for Tottenham for Tottenham's sake and obviously Argentina's sake, you'd wish he'd just stay on the pitch for the full 90 anyway. <laughs> I think he's had so many red cards. Well, he has had so many red cards this season. And Pedro Porro, obviously, the sport and Lisbon um, fullback that he did sign for big money as well. And Vicario, who for me, is uh, certainly going to be in a lot of Premier League fans' team of the season. For me, I'd have Vicario as goalkeeper of the season. That's not my honest opinion. People might be screaming, Alisson, but I think he's been he's been absolutely ridiculous, in, in all honesty. In terms of the bench for Newcastle, um, in terms of game changers, you've got, obviously, in terms of Lewis Hall, obviously back from Chelsea, Emerson Royale, 2024, and he's still playing for Tottenham. Uh, Livermento, Brian Gill, somehow still at Tottenham, which is a bit of a mad one. Hoiberg, obviously back from injury this over the last couple of months, which is going to be a big boost for them, in uh, along with Benica, uh, Benton Cord as well. Kulazeski, oh, I love Kulazeski, but he's just one of them players, really, that it's like form and a bit more consistency. That's where it, 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 it divides the elite-level players. From obviously the just the average players, just the, the, well, not average, but the, the bracket below world class as well. Um, because that's he's got a long way to go <laughs> to get even up to those levels as well. But he's still a young lad and uh, certainly a player that will want to keep an eye on anyway. But red, everyone, Tottenham, Newcastle fans, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below as well. Your thoughts on obviously the game, your score predictions as well. Um, but big up there, Jug, I fancy another goal fest. 3-2 to Newcastle. I'll tell you why. It's going to be an exciting game. Hence why I'm doing a watch long. Everyone, obviously, battle for the top four. Obviously, Tottenham know their job. I was just watching an interview before we went on, went live. And he was speaking about, obviously, it's in their hands. A bit like Liverpool in terms of we know our job, really, as long as we keep on winning. But we need to get a lot more goals. If, if, if Certainly, if Arsenal do win all theirs as well. But, uh, yeah, it's been disappointing, in all honesty, chat. Let us know your thoughts. If any Newcastle fans, let us know. Because it's it's been a horrendous season by all accounts, Premier League form wise for Newcastle. Injuries are part and parcel. We've had injuries over the last couple of years. Look at our centre. When Liverpool had literally no centre half, so we were playing Hendo and Fabinho centre half. That's where you need to make that bridge as a football club in terms of just bringing in that overall quality. So there's not much of a drop off. As I said before, there's some players in that Newcastle lineup at the minute. You look at Longstaff as well and, and, and Anderson. Like, no, for where Newcastle want to be, and that's Champions League football on a more regular occurrence as well. Obviously, it looks like the, the Premier League is not going to be getting a top four spot, which is ridiculous because I think you look at the quality in the Premier League. Obviously, it doesn't help when Liverpool get smashed by Atalanta anyway this week. Um, but it is what it is. Um, check is Klopp playing 5G chess or something? I don't know. We'll make our minds up anyway. Go and watch me post match anyway. Certainly not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let me know your thoughts and the score prediction. But Newcastle will Eddie Howe still be the football club at the end of the season? Speak to all my Geordie mates this season. I have said to them for where they want to be. You look at Unai Emre going to Aston Villa, there's quality out there in the management. See, Yes, he's been absolutely phenomenal since he's come into Newcastle, really bridged that gap, improved the quality. But for the aspirations of their owners and the fan base, even, they've had a, Newcastle fans have had a sniff of Champions League football this season. And certainly the Geordies will be wanting to be knocking on the door for Champions League football on a more regular occurrence. So 
look at Unai Emery, mate, the job he's done, that he's transformed Aston Villa Football Club in terms of what they as fans have known over the last couple of years, but he's took them on to another journey. And certainly if Villa do get Champions League football, it's what they do with that Champions League revenue as well. And uh, obviously having a manager of Unai Emery's quality, certainly that will attract a lot of players. He's very renowned, but... Um, for me, I think Eddie Howe will leave Newcastle. Not leave, but I think he might get sacked, um, in all honesty. Might be a bit harsh, but if you ask Newcastle fans where you want to be seeing them play some of the football they've played, Newcastle has been absolutely diabolical this season. And everyone goes to new injuries, but even still, you've still got to get a tune out of those players that are still playing. A bit like us against Atalanta, regardless, even us this season when we've been disappointing. doesn't matter who's playing or whatnot. It's up to the coach, really, or the manager, to really get the best out of the players, first and foremost. Um, and that's with injuries aside, uh, aside as well. But uh, we are very close to kick off here as well, everyone. Um, Bruno is too good for Newcastle. He should move on. Yeah, he's, it, that's going to be one of the biggest issues. But I, Newcastle keeping hold of the likes of Isaac and, of course, um, Bruno Gomez as well. Imagine that <laughs> Jamie, don't remind me, love. Uh, Desmond 2 2. Brian's big up there, Brian. How are we doing, Alan? How are we? Afternoon, Brian. Hope you had a good weekend, everyone, as well. And uh, whatever you've been up to. And uh, hopefully, we should be treated to an absolute classic. But the script. Tottenham going forward there. I tell you what, Benton Core nearly getting into the penalty area there. Very sloppy in the early opening 30 seconds of this game. But I think in terms of game-wise, chat, this game is going to be amazing. Both teams love to play attack and brand the football. Both teams do leave a lot of space in behind. But as I was saying with Mickey van der Ven, I'd love it. And I've done plenty of shows in the summer speaking about Mickey van der Ven potentially coming to Liverpool before he got his move to, obviously, Tottenham in the, in the window. And uh, he's adapted to life in the Premier League like a duck to water, really. He's going to be one to keep an eye on. I think he will He will be a, an elite-level centre-half if he continues his development, Mickey van der Ven. Such a young player as well, coming from Wolfsburg. I think a lot of teams in Europe did kind of miss a trick with Mickey van der Ven, but Tottenham, Risked it and he believed in Mickey van der Ven's quality. I think he got him for like 40, 50 million, didn't he? The uh, the Dutchman. Well, yeah, Bader van Dijk needs to watch those arms. <laughs> yeah, Mickey van der Ven's quick though, isn't he? That's how you are. Yeah, he is, Brian. That's the thing. Gordon, I'll tell you what, Gordon's done absolutely phenomenal. Broken into the penalty area. Oh, it's just a final ball. But, uh, what's everyone's thoughts on Gordon this season, chat? Because before, obviously, the turn, well, the beginning of the year, he started the Premier League like an house on fire. Is that going to be on ball? No, it's going to be a corner. It's great defending. Here's me slagging off Anderson at the beginning of the, beginning of the stream. Shouldn't be anywhere near Newcastle starting to let them. I know they've got injuries, like, but... but yeah, big, fast start for both sides. But it, uh, to Gordon Chat, I, I think he started the Premier League campaign so well. Absolutely phenomenal the way he started it. But uh, I think he just dipped in form, really. So maybe another corner. Pedro Porro read that well. It'd be interesting if Liverpool do get. Uh, Amarin, do we go and get uh, Poto? I don't think we will because we've got, obviously got Trent and we've got obviously Connor Bradley as well, but you never know. Obviously played for Amarin at Sporting. Ball out. Tottenham pressing quite high as well. Oh, yeah, very different. Sorry, La, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> what you meant, Van Dijk? Yeah, Mickey van der Ven. Highly talented. I love him. I absolutely love him as a centre-half. He allows, obviously, Tottenham. Obviously, when we, that ridiculous game we played with Tottenham this season. Still haven't recovered from it. 
Diaz's goal. But that refereeing, but Undoggy, left back of the season for me, for you, chat. Certainly is for me. He's uh, been absolutely phenomenal. His best part of the season come at the beginning of the year. Obviously, when Tottenham surprised the, the whole of Europe, really, in terms of the, the start. But uh, Undoggy and uh, Vicario, for me, certainly should be in a lot of people's Premier League goalkeepers of the season. He is in mine. I know Ali's having a very good season, but I think Ali's, Ali and Kelleher have played the exact same games, haven't they? And Kelleher's played just a bit more than Allison this season, which is mad. Obviously, with Allison being injured. Yeah, Brian's quick this year, but hamstrings. It is, it is, but I, a bit like Michael Owen, obviously. Even Torres at the back end of his career. Especially when you look and analyse players with the that are, do have pace and abundance. Obviously, a big key attribute as a footballer. You've just got to keep very careful. But when you've got such elite level pace as a centre half, you'd fancy yourself against absolutely everyone. But he, it's not he just, he's not a centre half that just relies on play, pace as well. He's a centre half that reads the game extremely well and understands where to be in the right times as well. Afternoon, Panov. Afternoon, Alan. Alan's gone with 3 2 as well. Uh, who's that? 3 2 to Newcastle. Yes, tell you what, there's going to be goals in this game, certainly. Isaac as well, as I was saying before, it was on mute chat. Apologies before. Isaac, one of them as well. A player that could and will reach elite level in European football in terms of striking form, but a player that is heavily dependent on staying fit again. Um, I think he's one of the most naturally gifted finishers in the Premier League, especially in Europe as well. I think some of the finishers, even when he's played Liverpool in the past couple of seasons, I remember that game where he just turned up at Anfield, hadn't trained with Newcastle at all all week, and he just scored. I think he's, he would offside the goals anyway, but I mean, even from those little moments, he's a natural clinical goal scorer, Isaac. Well, uh, Tottenham got a corner there. Madison, ball in. Good ball in to the back stick. Timo Werner. it. Sure, they're going to be a foul. Is that not going to be a foul on, by Basuma? I mean, a card on Har Harvey Barnes. Oh, the equaliser. But yeah, afternoon, Panov. Afternoon, chat. And to nearly ball over the top. The cardio. Don't mess it up, lads. I've just been giving you your flowers. Oh, that is naughty, Bentancourt. Ball in! Oh, that's the team of winning we all know and love. Don't go back and watch the videos where they said I wanted to buy Timo. It's all AI generated. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Geordie, how are we, lads? We're doing a, a watch long for the, the Geordie boys, lads. Geordie, thoughts on the game, lads? Expectations going into this game, lads? I'll tell you what, Brennan Johnson with this exquisite ball to the back stick, fizzed it with a lot of pace, and Timo Werner doing his best Darwin Nunes impression. Yeah, it's been a great start anyway. I tell you what. I tell you what, there's certainly going to be goals in this chat. Yeah, best of luck, Jordy, for today. Obviously, we, we 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 when we've done our Liverpool watch longs and we spoke about our Liverpool, obviously top four space, obviously Premier League winners <laughs> race space. Um top four. Obviously, then you've got to think about top five. We know the European Champions League spots aren't going to be in play considering Liverpool got whacked and walloped. Obviously, West Ham getting beat don't help. The Premier League getting another fifth European spot. So, it's about getting that Europa League conference, the Europa League and obviously the Champions League spots for all those teams. Newcastle going forward here. Ball to the back stick. What a ball! 
Harvey Barnes couldn't quite get his feet sorted today. It's an amazing ball by Anthony Gordon down that right-hand channel. That's probably going to be ball of the weekend. I'll tell you what, the, the level of quality on that delivery there. Harvey Barnes couldn't quite get his feet sorted to get, at least get a shot on side. Get Gordon to take a corner now for Newcastle. Dan Bain, Fabian Sharp. <coughs> He's a big man, Dan Bain, as we know. Good 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, well, there's Zolo Markham for Newcastle. Shades of Rafa Benitez. Ball in! Oh! I tell you what, Bruno Gomez getting on the end of that. Denying a goal, a certain goal. Let's have a little look at his first initial flick on Basuma. I tell you what, Basuma would have well was at the front post. He was ready just to toe poke that home. But Bruno Gomez. Basuma found. A miss there at the front post. Ball in by Gordon again. Another corner. Oh, that's poor. That is poor by Harvey Barnes. Should be converting that on target. Dragged it wide. Mark, lad. How are we? Not too bad, mate. Watching the footy. Um, this is the other game. Obviously, we'll be doing a watch along tomorrow. Um, as you can see there on the on the on the image. Next show today is at 7 p.m. today. We'll be doing our Premier League Liverpool watch along. Eh, not watch along, pre match build up show. Um, so that'll be live at 7 pm today, chat. So stay tuned on the channel for any Liverpool fans. <laughs> but yeah, most goals in games Premier League this season. Bloody hell. Yeah, Newcastle have had the most goals in the Premier League in terms of goals and can like goals scored and goals conceded as well. There lies the issue. Defensive record for Newcastle. I think Sven Botman's injury this season, well, a couple of injuries he's had, haven't helped. I'll tell you what, Harvey Barnes would have been in there with a lovely little ball. It was well read by Poto. Now I was doing chat 10 minutes into the game. Obviously, we'll have a, a Premier League team in the season show coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, give it a, probably, a, yeah, probably give it another five weeks and then we might vote on it. That'd be good. Hopefully, if you want to get involved in that, let me know. Hit us up on socials and I'd love to get you on. Yeah, do City play today? Yes, Panov, the do play today, mate. They are playing a Luton. So it should be about 10 0 City. So, uh, yeah, it's pointless even thinking about that game, really. Guaranteed three points of that. Chat, is the cat. Who'd be your Premier League goalkeeper of the season? Mine would be Vicario. Obviously, the Tottenham goalkeeper. He's literally played every game of the Premier League campaign for Tottenham this season. So, that's why, for me, I don't know why Dan Baines not editing that all the way back to the Bravke. That's a strange decision. Then I say, it's unmarked there. Good little find by Madison. Arsenal tomorrow. George, has gone with David Ayer. Good shout there, mate. Had a very good season. Very, very good season. Jordi, how many games has, um, or chat, how many games has David Raya played in the Premier League this season? I'm guessing David Raya has made the more appearances in the Prem. Because there was, there was this season, there was thing going on with both goalkeepers, wasn't there? Arteta couldn't bloody make his mind up which goalkeeper he wanted to go with. But, uh, yeah, it's just been a bit mad from Arteta. Yeah, Chas, you go with David Ayer? Yeah, it's a fair shout there, Chas, as well. I, like, for me, I don't think... And 
Bunch! Oh, good defending there by Rama- R- Romano. Think about Fabrizio Romano then. Romero. Romero, that's too easy by Pedro Porro. Just to allow um, Harvey Barnes. Not quite the equaliser. It's in there, down that left-hand channel. Just ran down the bar line. There was no contact at all, mate. Nicky van der Ven at the front post. So there's a corner to Newcastle. Ball in. Vicario. Oh, that's a very good save. Very good save. Oh, he stepped out of the penalty area there, but that was a foul by Isaac. Just give him a little shove there. That's a phenomenal catch at the back post there. Saved it with, caught it with one hand. I'm surprised that's not a yellow card there. I don't think he's meant to Isaac, but he stopped a potential counter-attacking opportunity for Tottenham. I missed the first four games. Uh, he missed the first four games. And his first three since. Oh, happy days there, but I, yeah, there we go. So fair enough, yeah. So, how many games you into the Premier League season then? Yeah. So he's played, yeah, so he's played 27 games. Yeah. So 100%, 100% should be up there, right? For every elite side, as we know, with Allison, between our sticks as well. Oh, what a ball by Son. He's played in Timo Werner. Timo and Son then initially gets in the way. Very strange. It was he wasn't in offside position there, Son. He's playing centre half for Newcastle there. What a ball outside the foot by Son. Played in Timo down the left hand side. I tell you what, that's on target there, Son. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, 25 starts because he couldn't play versus Brentford and an injury. Oh, sounds happy days there. Yeah, to get still an agent from Geordie. I really want him um, to an army. I remember he was Golden Glove last season. It's a big shout there, Geordie, as well. Obviously, I, I think we all love Nick Poe. He's a phenomenal goalkeeper. No denying that. Certainly in my top five um, in, in Premier League. When he's in top form, he's a ridiculous goalkeeper. But, as is, <laughs> seems the case with a lot of Tottenham and Newcastle players when we speak about them as well. Like, you look at David, well, not David again, Nick Poe. You look at Sven Botman as well. Highly talented centre half, just being injured on so many times. Newcastle are in here. Isaac, Harvey Barnes, and again, good defending by Romero. And there's a potential breakaway now for Tottenham if you can get it right. Brennan Johnson, and Tottenham need to move this ball so much more quicker than they are at the minute. Just so sluggish at this moment in time when you do get that ball in the final third. Madison, Madison, Timo, oh, get him off the pitch. Timo Werner. I try and defend Timo Werner. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of Tottenham fans out there that try and do that, but the more to watch of him. The man couldn't hit a barn door machine gun. He's all pace. Timo Werner. Can't believe I made videos a couple of years ago asking Liverpool to sign him. That period is all a blank to me. Never me. I was talking about another team winner. Yeah. We'll big up there. Both Eze and Elise are cleared for tomorrow. <coughs> <coughs> oh, Jesus, Chas. Um, big up there, Matthias. Typical, lads. At least they have the game of the season because he wants a big move to Liverpool. That's what all the players do. We are their Champions League football. They want to play for Liverpool. They want to play for the likes of United as well because United paid them five in the grand a week. Um, and then they want to play for City as well because City win titles as well. So, so uh, that's the thing. That's what comes accustomed with being a Liverpool supporter. 
every team that you come up against will play their Champions League. Bloody hell, look at Toulouse in the Europa League this season. I know we played the kids, but uh, yeah. They absolutely slapped us at home. Madison trying to pit, pit, pirouette there in the penalty area. And that is poor by Bruno. I think Isaac initially wanted that ball over the top because if he got that Bruno over the top, would have been 1v1 with Mickey van der Ven. Would have been an interesting, interesting encounter in terms of who would have won that pace-wise. Probably would have been Mickey van der Ven. Yeah, Bradford had a good... Uh, Brentford had a good goalkeeper. He did. Yeah, but it never happens. Chat, never happens. Um, well, Ray is one of the best in the Premier League with distribution. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. <clears throat> you look at Ramsdale. Literally, if you if you give him a ball into his feet at about 30 mile an hour, it, it'd end up in the back of the net or probably in the stand. Like, this is the modern day football now as well. Well, over the last 15, 20 years, the way football has been evolving... And what managers want to be doing, it's it's changed massively. That's got to be a car by Madison. He's just, yeah, he's just body checked um, Gordon as much as I like him doing that. <laughs> That's a card. That's a card. <laughs> Newcastle fans will be few off that. Are you mad, ref? Whatever, these refs. But yeah, the, the, it's, it's so integral that go, you've got a goalkeeper now at your club that can play proper football as well. Miss, uh, that should be his first name, Jordy. Miss, Miss Timo, or cro ball over bar Timo or something. He, 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 I've never, well, I think of another player that reminds me. Yeah, just every single time. There was a game a couple of weeks ago where he's literally one yard out. He's one yard out and blazes over the bar. I'm sorry, you're a professional footballer, lad. He's done the hard work. He's got in. He's, he's done a made made a great run. His teammates got him there, and uh, yeah, just ball probably ends up on Mars or something, lad. Yeah. When's Edison back? Mark, he should be back soon, mate. He was on the bench. Chat, he was on the bench against Real Madrid, wasn't he? I swear he was, or oh, must have been seeing things. And the other Premier League game. He's done well there, Basuma. Very well worked by Basuma. And then he does that, and Madison just loses the ball. Well done, lad. Lovely ball by Fabian Shah. Newcastle are in here. Harvey Barnes off the left-hand flank, cutting into the penalty area, and again... As is as Newcastle season, the final ball. And that's surely gonna be a card. Dan Bain has to be getting a yellow card there. And Madison's complex. We all are. Are you what is this ref doing? It's a counter-attack. Sort of mad. That is the most blatant yellow card. suppose this is justice for uh, that episode at White Hart Lane against us. <laughs> but that guy's have a stonewall yellow card. <laughs> Damn big. He's lit. Uh, uh, and Ange is absolutely furious. And I'm guessing every Tottenham fan around the UK or the world is fuming. It's blazing at that decision by the referee. Get these refs out of the Premier League. Oh, good flick on there by Brennan Johnson. Son needs a bit of support. I'll tell you what, good work by Fabian Shah. Needs a bit of, a couple of options there. I think he was getting a nosebleed, getting that far down the left-hand channel there. Centre-half should be nowhere in that position. But it was a good run. Oh, Brian, I do not want to imagine that. They'd be all right in rugby or something. I don't know. (laughs) 
obviously Madison heavily linked with Newcastle at the beginning of the year anyway. But uh, I think he made the right decision going to Tottenham. The bright lights of London for any player, really. And obviously Tottenham's new stadium. Yeah, Jack, do you think we are losing the plot? As a question? Um, probably, Mark. And I was... Uh, go when you just think about the game, like, two days after. Like, you, we've all watched that's the buzz, like, tracking back for the fair goal. If you haven't, sorry you don't want to watch the replays. Just watch it back, the fair goal. I'm sorry. doesn't matter if it's a buzz, like, any player for that matter for Liverpool Football Club. You should be tracking back. You should be at least doing that. That's one fabric of Jürgen Klopp's when he come into the football club. Everyone needs to give 110%. But suppose I couldn't even be absolutely bothered to track back. For me, I watched that game and I'm hoping the season doesn't unravel as it has done. But it's almost a case in point of the players have gone. Jürgen's not going to be here next year, so why should I bother? I hope I am wrong. I hope I am honestly wrong and these lads do as proud. But if the results don't start going our way this season, we don't perform and we don't start finishing our chances. That to me is a buzz line. A couple of those players on, on Thursday night, it was like, why should I bother? But might have been reading into it too much. And is that going to be a card now? Gordon has been absolutely chopped down. By Timo Werner. So he can't shoot, Timo. And he can't tackle. What can this man do? I don't know. I I'll tell you what, that was Mickey van der Ven's challenge. Where's the cameraman pointing at Timo? You have one job, these TV companies. Get it right. Don't be cutting away to another player when it's not even him. That's tackled him. Oh, Mickey van der Ven's getting a, a good word there by the referee. <laughs> Fabian Shea. <laughs> Is he? Oh, he's, he's booking him. Ref! Oh, ref. Tottenham fans are screaming at the telly, even in the away end at Newcastle. Mickey van der Ven's been yellow carded, but there's been about five other challenges before that. So referees set the precedent now. Any tackles on a counter-attack or tackles of that nature should be getting a yellow card. 26 minutes in. Referees open Pandora's box now with the yellow cards. You don't know what the referee's going to do. Big up there, GF. How are we, lads? Hope you had a good weekend, mate. That's sure there's going to be a foul at the back post. Obviously, we'll be having our pre-match build-up show on today at 7pm. So, do tune into the channel on all social media platforms as well. But yeah, it's been a very... If you're just tuning in, a very... I know it's nil-nil, but it's been a very ferocious start for both sides. End-to-end. -end. Just lacking that final killer ball. Really, in the final favour for both teams. Yeah, as Brian said, working hard and running is a bare minimum expectation. It is. Uh, do we really need a linesman? Uh, yeah. The thing is, I'd abolish the VAR. If the referees, or any referees for that matter, they should be just selected on their quality, their performance as well. But the, the, the performance and the base level of, like... The way they analysed them and the, the way they marked them, and um, in terms of how well they've done, the the, the quality of the Fs is on the floor this season. And the good thing is this season as well, going into next season, sorry, is we are getting hallelujah, we are getting semi-automated offsides. Why has it took them this long? 
we wa- we all done plenty of watch alongs in the World Cup, and it worked to an absolute bloody T. For some bizarre reason, for some corrupt reason, whatever you want to call it, the Premier League did not decide to go with it. But it's great to see the actual technology coming in next season, but it's only a year or a couple of years too late, really. To play Panov, these footballers, and don't let me start a Panov and chat. You know me, these footballers are paid too much money. Too much money. They, they live in a realm of fantasy land. Um, if it was down to me, I'd be giving all the doctors, the nurses, the 200, 300 grand a week because they save lives, they do so much for everyone around the world. They do a phenomenal job. But, as is the commercial revenue in football, and as is the money awashed within football. Oh, Tottenham are in here. Ball in, Son. Oh, what are you doing? Son, now a long search and ball forward. Gordon, he's done well here. It's a two-on-two. Isaacs breaking into the penalty area. One nil. Isaac, Newcastle, a phenomenal work by Gordon there. Battling with the Tottenham centre half. Played a phenomenal ball, but it was it all stems from Hummin Son and James Madison at the other end of the pitch. Mixing up at the penalty area and a long search and ball. From the Newcastle centre half, ball over the top. It was a two on two. Gordon never let that die. He battled. And Isaac, as I said at the top of the show, one of the most clinical finishers in Europe. If he can just stay fit. Is he on? Yeah, he's on all day, every day of the week, there. And that is a big goal for Newcastle. And it's a dent in Tottenham's hopes. This afternoon for their chase for Champions League football. We all anticipate Tottenham to get it, but you never know in football. Game on. Game on. Isaac, the coolest man in St. James's Park. He knew exactly where he wanted that. He sent Mickey van der Ven on his backside. It's just that initial shift onto his right hand side. It's a very good finish. Uh, if you don't play to watch doctors. True, Brian. True, true. That's the thing, though, isn't it? And they're in here. Get what? And that's a go. Come on, Gordon. I'll tell you what. Sack this director for TNT. He's too arsed about showing a replay. Newcastle are in. I don't even know how. I don't even know how Tottenham lost that ball off the kickoff. Yeah, Gordon 2-0. Tell you what, sack, sack this director in the camera gallery here. Mickey van der Ven. Ah! So Vicario plays a long ball. It's an absolute, they're at sixes and sevens, this Tottenham back line. But for some bizarre reason from the kickoff, Mickey van der Ven plays it to Vicario, plays it up the other end of the pitch for Cardio, and that is horrendous defending. Here's me waxing lyrical about Mickey van der Ven. Case the commentator here, son. 2 0 Newcastle. What a start in this game. I said there was going to be goals in this game. I did, but I chat. Sorry, Tottenham fans, of course. But yeah. <laughs> David Ray for me, playing really play a goalkeeper of the season. But it was ridiculous. Like the TNT didn't even show it, but he showed it on the replay. I don't, I can't fathom. I don't think Tottenham fans understand even why. They had the, the kickoff and then they went all the way back to the centre half, who then played to the Picardio, who absolutely blasts it up the other end of the pitch. And that's when obviously Newcastle win that. Long ball and then Isaac's in. (coughs) 
It's shambolic, really. It's not good enough. Aaron, afternoon, lads. Hope you had a good weekend, mate. Or even if you are all popping in for a couple of seconds or whatnot. Have a very good weekend. Obviously, we'll be live at 7 p.m. today for, obviously, our build-up show. I'm looking forward to it. At the end of the day, we've got to win all of our games till now the end of the season. But you've missed, if you're just tuning in, you've missed a very good start. I know Tottenham haven't scored. They haven't even registered a shot on target. But Tottenham, has, have, as they have been for many of Tottenham fans this season, I bet, they get into the final third and they just don't know what to do. Saying that, Timo Wayne has probably scored about nine points for Wigan Rugby Club today because he's so many chances over the bar and everything. Georgie, let's go. It's a great start for your lads, mate. Yeah, Adam, did you see it? Plus, he had this lad, didn't he? He should just start playing NFL or something like because uh, And he can't even defend. He made a challenge before, a good 10, 15 minutes ago. Should just. And he's in here. Isaac! Why is he not shot? Tell you what, Mickey Van der Ven. It's Van der Ven we know. But I tell you what, what a ball. Is that Bruno Gomez? No, it's Anderson with a lovely, exquisite outside the foot pass. Oh, what a game. What a game here. Who are Villa? Mark, who are Villa? Sorry, chat. I should know who are Villa. Who are Villa playing tomorrow? I'm hoping Villa get top four. I had them eye on my Premier League prediction. Ball in. I tell you what, they're all queuing up. Especially Dan Bain. You don't want big Dan Bain at the back post queuing up there. Undoggy just about got a slight touch on him really to knock him off balance. Good defending there by the Italian. It was Arsenal. At Arsenal at home. I'm going to check. Yeah. He'd anticipate Arsenal to win that chat. Um, is Watkins still out injured? Is Watkins going to be back for tomorrow? So they got no Douglas Luiz. He's suspended. Commanded the injury. It looks like Ollie Watkins might be back. Douglas Luiz and uh, Kamara will be big misses. <coughs> Isaac! Oh, no, he missed. Should have been 3 0. Isaac. Isaac's on fire. Sorry. Tell you why. He's got the freedom of Newcastle here. What are the tot new Tottenham centre halves doing? They're going left, they're going right, they're going up and down. Horrendous defending by the Tottenham centre halves. You haven't got a Scooby Doo where to go. Isaac's movements elite so far. Thirty-five minutes, in, thirty-six minutes into the game, it's absolutely terrorising this Tottenham back line. Is that going to be another corner? It will be. I tell you what, Chas. I tell you what. Yeah, it's going to be a big score, this. Keep the faith, Andrew. We've got to keep the faith as well. Whatever happens with Liverpool, we back these lads to the very end. And uh, I know it's frustrating. I was fuming, as you can tell from the post-match. Appreciate everyone for tuning in for the post-match as well, everyone. And uh, welcome to all the new subscribers as well. Is that going to be a foul? Yeah, it was a foul at the back post. But like all of us, whatever happens, happens. I've got all faith, but we certainly need to play much better. Not just than, than we played Thursday night. We haven't been playing well for a very long time. I think all of us can admit that. Even Klopp probably would admit that as well. Um, we've been getting lucky in certain games. We're creating chances. Don't get me wrong. Chat, aren't we? But just can't finish our dinner in front of goal. And that probably... That and alongside some suspect defending at the back in certain moments. Yeah, that is a foul on Son. 100% saying. 
But yeah, big up there, Aaron. Massive thank you, mate. Thank you to all you for the big support. Um, United are Oh, yeah, nah, Mark. They're done. They're done. They're done. No chance. Yeah, it was coming, on and on. I think all of us can kid ourselves when we speak to our mates or family members or when we just speak about the deads and when we do our shows as well or whatnot. It was coming. We got absolutely tactically outclassed. And uh, Everton got their Champions League final when we played them as well. But that is probably going to be our most difficult game. And we've still got to play Tottenham as well at home. Do we remember that champ that that game at Anfield was it two years ago? Horrendous draw. They turned up at Liverpool and parked the bus, Conte. But they've done the job. That was one of those games that cost us the league as well. Tell you what, Barnes, what a ball! Isaac! I tell you what, the quality from the likes of Gordon and the likes of Harvey Barnes has been exceptional. The ball's into the channel to get Isaac in there. Ball in. <laughs> Tell you what, it's a one-man army at the back here for the top them, Mickey van der Ven. But uh, Newcastle's transitional play in those wide channels has been absolutely exceptional. It's phenomenal that the, the balls over the, the the diagonal balls are they're doing so well. Obviously, make sure you do, are hitting that subscribe button as well. Drop a like on the video as well. Really just help out the videos as well, everyone. You're absolute legends. Ball in. Oh, he's unmarked there, Isaac. The front post should be hitting the target there. Already oh, got a goal this afternoon. Should have been making that two goals for himself. Yeah. Yeah, true, Aaron. Obviously, it's a bit like Joe when Joe when Jürgen Klopp took over Liverpool and we wanted to play this high intensity. So you are. There's a mix up. Get up. Brennan Johnson. Ball to the back stick. Timo's done him. I'll tell you what, it's a good ball by Timo. But yeah, there's not an in that. No foul there. But Tottenham still got this ball here. Son off the left-hand side now. Basuma. Son. Little give and go with Madison. Straight after Bravka. But yeah. it's uh, With Tottenham, you play such a high line, don't they? Thing is, Liverpool play with a high line. But... Thing is... Chat. Thinking about it. Do you think... Liverpool should adapt the high line a bit more. Like the last couple of months, I don't think we've been kind of dropping off a bit more. I don't know. Let me know. Yeah, Andrew, I said at the top of the show, mate. He, the main thing for Newcastle after this season is improving on that quality, getting that Champions League revenue, investing it into the squad as well. But it's about keeping the likes of Bruno, Gramares, Isaac as well. Um, and look a couple of the other players as well that they have got. I love Livermento was a fullback as well, Chas. I think that was a very good sign, very astute signing by Newcastle. A lot of money, but for the young lads as well. Very talented right back <coughs> or fullback, sorry. You'll have to do another show with me sometime, Jack. Yeah, Defo Bright. I saw that, mate. Defo Bright. We'll get that sources. Harvey Barnes, ball in. Great defending by Basuma. Would have been 3-0. Isaac was sniffing around the front post there. <clears throat> Tell you what, the movement for Barnes and Gordon to this afternoon so far, exceptional. I do wish Lewis Diaz would move like that as well, in all honesty. Like, this is a game that, are, like, you watch the likes of Gordon and Barnes, the cause and absolute carnage. Diaz can do that, but what I've loved the most about the white, the wingers for Newcastle this afternoon is they, they're getting the balls into those channels, the balls over the top, and the and the finds and Isaac on every occasion, really. Yeah, Zane, he is. But 
Isaac's done that to plenty of centre half so far this, in the Premier League. Yeah. Big up there, Liz. It's Liz in. Big up there, Liz. Long time no see, you, mate. Hope you're looking after yourself, mate. And uh, lots of thank you for tuning in. Hope you're having a good weekend. Yeah, he did, Andrew. But I think, I think if Luis Diaz's dad or whoever keeps on giving interviews to the Spanish media about his uh, son's desire to play for the big teams in Spain, won't help. Time will tell. The only people that know that Diaz will stay are Diaz's agent and Diaz himself anyway. If he's got aspirations and wants to play in Spain, if he wants to, then Sam, let him go anyway. I want someone that wants to stay and play for Liverpool Football Club as well. And the thing is, we can improve on Diaz's quality as well. He's a good player, but you look at the quality and we have in Sardio Mane. He's, Diaz is not even half the player Sardio Mane is in a Liverpool shirt. Might be harsh, but it's it's facts. Mane was elite, and we need another elite left winger in the team. Or whatever the player, whoever comes in in the summer. Whatever left-sided player they want, we need to bring them in. Newcastle will most probably have to be to upload players this summer. They will, but that's the thing, obviously, with the rules in place now. Newcastle, with their owners, they can't do what Chelsea done under Roman Abramovich when they took over. They were spending stupid amounts, weren't they? Like, bare money. Bare, bare money. But now, like, there's rules in place that no one can catch up. Like, City caught up to United and Liverpool in about 10 years, in terms of their heavy spending, proving on the quality as well, bringing in the managers as well. But Newcastle or no other players can do that no more, which is, is that good for the league? Yes and no. Because say if say if Brentford got taken over by a multi-billionaire and they wanted to have a go, yes, there should be rules in place in terms of the spending, but... It's just mad that City and Chelsea were allowed to just appear out of nowhere, really, in terms of the top of the table. That's going to be a foul. Yeah, Tottenham. Tottenham have been really poor. Two minutes added on here, chat, as you can see. Yeah. Um, yes, I know, mate. I think he's just a bit too old. I think, Lee, how old's Lee Alchas? Is he like 26, 27? I think he was a bit more younger. He was about 23, 24. But if he's that age, then it sounds. But yeah, we need real quality. Yeah, Brian. Give Gakpo another year as a squad option. Yeah, that, we've misused Gakpo like, as a player. Massively misused him. Good game, huh? Good first 45 minutes to Geordie's. We'll be absolutely buzzing with that. As you can see, in terms of statistics of the first half, uh, do, do, do. as you can see there, expected XG, 1.83 there for Newcastle, and obviously a 0.51. Possession-wise, Tottenham dominated possession-wise, but done absolutely diddly squat with it. Obviously, only registering one shot on target. I think Ange Poshikoglu will be very disappointed with that. I think it's so obvious when you do miss a player of the quality of Harry Kane. He was their link-up man. Like, he was ridiculous. He'd done everything. He created, he scored. He'd done everything for that Tottenham forward line. But with him no more there, no longer there, sorry, then I just don't think Hummin Son is that player very much to link up the play in terms of that striking position. I think he does his best work, son, off the left-hand channel, really. And it's, uh, it's been disappointing, in the honest opinion. So in terms of Newcastle, obviously uh, shots on goal, shots on target, obviously Newcastle have really capitalised on them. From their 10 shots, they've really punished um, Tottenham at the back, or, uh, at the back anyway. But uh, it's been one of them, Be honestly been one of them. 
it's been an exciting game from all of us. I think in terms of, obviously, you've got Aston Villa fans looking on, seeing what Tottenham are doing. They'll be made up with this result in terms of where this does leave the Premier League standings as it stands at the minute. Obviously, Man City, Tottenham do find themselves in that position. So let's get the, uh, the points on the board there. As you can see, um, Tottenham are on 60. Newcastle, 10 points behind Tottenham. Newcastle surely can't do it. Just, yeah, that's going to be impossible, isn't it? Because if you've got six games left, Newcastle to come back. But obviously, Tottenham have still got to play Liverpool. You've still got a couple of play. I think Tottenham have still got to play Arsenal as well. So, they could still do it, Newcastle, if results went their way. Same with Villa as well. If Villa do drop a couple of points here and there. So, it's all to play for. All to play for, for everyone there. It's exciting. So it'll be absolutely amazing for the rest of the Premier League in terms of the neutral as well, as we're watching this game. Absolutely exceptional. Um, uh, put it out, I'm not too bad, mate. Hope you have, have had a good weekend, mate, and, and you're looking after yourself. Massive thank you. And the uh, main thing is all the users are all well and good and you're having a good weekend, seeing the family, the friends as, as well, if you didn't work or whatnot, looking after yourself. Uh, Nunes is even worse off the left, in my opinion. Obviously, just speaking. Of, oh, Leo. Obviously, Andrew said, big up there as well. As Brian said, give Gakpo another year. Um, just playing quick. Uh, he just plays quick, wide forwards. That's the thing, right? And that's like you do look at Theo Walcott, and I've had this debate. Like Theo Walcott, was he a good player? Certainly, was a very good player, but I think. If you took the pace away from him, I suppose you could say that about most players as well. You look at Torres, but even still, if Torres didn't have that electric pace, he was a clinical finisher, very clinical finisher. Um, certainly, Suarez didn't have an abundance of pace. Suarez had nutmeg about eight players and then score. Um, so, but for me, there is players out there in Europe that are just heavily, heavily reliant on the pace. And when you do watch them, like, that's what bridges the gap between the the, the the below the world class level for me. Some players don't ever get to that world class level because, say, if you're a wide forward or an attacking player, where you, you when you analyze a player and you look at them, you look at their decision making. Like if they're a young player, say 22, 23, it's about what they can do in the next three, four year periods, whether they can understand the game and develop their final killer ball in terms of that. Because there's been so many players when you're watching the Premier League, when you, you, you do analyse them and you see them, you get into a very good position. And then when it comes down to the final delivery of the of the ball, whether that be the final transition in terms of getting a shot away, whether that be moving your body shape to your left or your right, creating that space, or whether it's, trying to find your other opposite attacker or your teammate in the penalty area where the, the, the teammate's unmarked in the penalty area and the player's got it on the byline or in the wide area and it's just that final killer ball that is needed. That's what Tottenham would be missing. They'd be getting into those areas of the pitch, but it's just that final ball that has been lacking. And that's the final ball that has been lacking for Liverpool as well so far this season. How many counter-attacks did we have, like, for Liverpool against Manchester United over those last two games. And even over the last couple of years as well, where Liverpool, I miss the days of Bobby Firmino, Mane and Salah counter-attacking. Those were the days, my friend. Like, when those three were on a counter-attack, you knew exactly what they were going to do. Like, it was a guaranteed goal. We were one of the most formidable, I'd say the most formidable counter-attacking side in the whole of Europe. Like, we were. But now... Like, whether it's Nunes, whether it's Gakpo, Joss is always bloody injured. Like, Salah, I think Salah struggles sometimes, like, in terms of counter-attacking. Obviously, it's he's been so accustomed to playing alongside, like, Mane and Firmino for a very long time. And I know people might be screaming, oh, it's a new team. It is. We've got new players embedding them in. But, obviously, it's all going to be changing next season. I know we'll be playing nice attacking football. You'd like to hope we'll be playing nice... Attacking football, intelligent football. 
but it's still going to take a, another 12 months, probably even six months. Ideally, we'd love it to be a bit more quicker in terms of a new manager coming in and stamping his authority and his philosophy on the team as well. But it's it's not going to happen overnight. So, <clears throat> and whether he brings in a couple of his ex-players or players that he wants to play his style of brand of football as well, if that's Aminin or whoever it is coming in, it's, it's going to be frustrating. Um, and that's why I've said well, on my videos last couple of weeks as well. I do think there will be a couple of uh, players leaving the football club um, alongside Jürgen Klopp as well. Because we need, let's be honest, we need to generate funds as well. For any new coach, you look at how important Adam Lallana was for Jürgen Klopp as well. He, he, he was the teacher's pet in terms of Adam Lallana being for Jürgen Klopp. He, he bought into the idea of what it meant to be a Jürgen Klopp player. He was in, the intensity was there in trading as well. James Milner, when we signed him, the exact core of those players, that those stylistic type of players, players that give, that have literally got an absolute bloody engine on them. The main disappointing thing with Lallana was his injuries. But I think if he wasn't injured, Lallana, I think he would have been one of Jürgen Klopp's best players in his reign at Liverpool. The sad thing was he just got injuries and it didn't quite work out and just didn't quite show the form. Warrington to be at Liverpool as well. <clears throat> Late birthday night with the lads as well. There we go. Obviously, if you did tune in as well, Leeds, no, no. Aaron, what is with those championship teams, lads? Was it Leicester bottled it against Plymouth Argyle last night? Like, ridiculous. Have a little look at that. Does does no one want to get promoted in the uh, in in the championship? It's ridiculous. I think it is like Ipswich have went on a mad run. Like, let's have a little look at that. So a draw, if that is to finish, saying that a draw for Leeds takes them top, only on goal difference. But it, <coughs> well, geez, just uh, uh, it would mean obviously Leicester and Ipswich. I've got games in hand on Leeds as well. So Leeds need to get that over the line as well. Southampton. So so Ipswich are third. Southampton fourth. West Brom fifth. And Norwich sixth as well. Please, Norwich, I don't want you back. In. Sorry, Norwich fans. But you, you just don't do nothing in the Premier League. Give it to a Coventry. Give it to a Preston. Or give it to like a, a someone that hasn't been. Like a Bristol City. It'd be mad seeing Bristol City. Like I love the fact that Brentford have come in the league and they've actually done the due diligence, really, in terms of just staying in the league and actually wanting to stay in the league, by the way. Not just happy to have those parachute payments and then the owners probably going on holiday or whatnot and just, yeah, going sounds. We'll, we'll be back next season. No, none of that. Less of that. We want to be seeing some fresh teams in the Premier League as well. Ipswich. The old school Premier League team as well. There's a couple of old school classic teams in there as well. But West Brom, that's a who's their manager? He's been getting rave reviews anyway. Um, in terms of their who's their manager? Yeah, Cabro Carlos, Cabrian Carlos as well, the Spanish manager. He said, and I've seen a couple of uh, podcasts this season, and West Brom fans have been ra raving about him anyway. Want to keep an eye on. Um, let's be having you. Oh, Brian, no way, no way. But yeah, Jack, could Fabio uh, Carvalho have a future at Liverpool? Certainly, mate. <clears throat> Adam, everyone's position at Liverpool is, is a, everyone's position at the football club is back on the table, mate. Like, that's that's what happens with new managers. We all know that, mate. You know you know the best, uh, mate. You know more than me, mate. Like, it is. It, like, Carvalho, I think Morton might get a chance um, and that might, people might scream at the telly or the screen going, are you mad? But you look at statistically, the way in which Aminem wants to play, the, the total football, he likes midfielders that love to keep hold of possession. This is where I think the, um, was it team awareness, Jesus Christ, he doesn't play midfield for Liverpool. Um, Curtis Jones, um, I think he'll thrive in in a in an um, Aminem system, certainly. Obviously, you look at what... Curtis Jones, I know it was a, at a younger level, but obviously Curtis Jones doing very well in that sixth role in the England under, was it under 21s in the World Cup when they won or the Euros, whatever they won last year anyway. 
but it, it, it's it's going to be one of them. Everyone's position is the, the, going to be running through a brick wall now as well. And I want to be seeing, like, we've bought the buzz line. That's one of the most frustrating things. I know I mentioned them in terms of his attitude on the goal, but we are, we, we've bought the buzz line and <laughs> we, we're just not utilising his best qualities as a player. Like, we're using his capacity as being a very good runner as a midfielder. That's all well and good. But to Bosley, he's not getting into the positions. He, he, for me, he's not been getting coached properly since he's coming to Liverpool. He scored a couple of bangers here and there. I think to Bosley, when he arrives late into the penalty area, that's where he thrives. That's where he gets his goals. That's where he got his goals for um, for Leipzig as well. Um, So it's going to be one of them. No one's <laughs> new manager. Yeah, the, the art mark. And I think the man, this big up there, Doug. How are we, Doug, as well? Uh, Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. Uh, could it be, could it be an, there we go. Probably butchered that. You know me with my pronunciations with uh, footballers and managers. <laughs> but we won't go there. Um, easily done. But chat, what are we saying in terms of the other games as well? Um, we'll have a little look. So Leeds need to win that. Let's have a little look. So, Premier League games today. Um, yeah. The Bournemouth United game's on, chat, but I'm not sitting doing a live stream much longer of Manchester United, I'm sorry. Um, if you ever see that on the channel, I'm deleting. You can start a petition for me to delete the channel. Um, yeah. Um. So, I was going to say, it's all over 3 p.m. kickoffs as well. Um, Brentford, the only time we'll do a Man United watch long is when Liverpool are playing at Manchester United. Um, so, you've got Brentford, Sheffield United. <sighs> Big game. Six points of a Sheffield United. Um, a win for them would still keep them in the relegation zone. I was going to say, it would give them a bit of hope. But, yeah, Sheffield are down, 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 down. Um, Burnley, Brighton. Burnley home. Chat, get your score predictions in here as well. Um, uh, it's a must win for Burnley. It is honestly a must win. Obviously, Brighton getting beat last week as well. Disappointing showing. But a win for Burnley would put them on, obviously, 22 points. It put them three points behind Luton as well. But you look at the fixtures Burnley have got coming up. So, the, the home games, they've only got Brighton at home, you've got Newcastle at home, and then you've got Forest at home. By Lord, could you imagine if Burnley and Forest needed three points, both of them, to survive in the Premier League? I'm hope I'm hoping that's what happens for the neutral perspective as well. Um, I know Burnley fans and Forest fans would not be wanting that as well. Um, but that will be twelve points there. So. It's a must win for Burnley. If they get beat there, I think that's them done in the Premier League, sadly. Uh, City Luton, probably going to be about 20 0. Uh, Luton might go 1 0 up, but they'll concede another 20 goals. Um, Forest Wolves, Forest need to win that. And Bournemouth United. Bournemouth will win that game. Bournemouth will win that game. One of the most informed teams in the Premier League so far this season. Chat, in all honesty, like you look at the job that Iriola, Arola, the, the, the fella that come in anyway, completely butchered him. What's his name? Iriola, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Awesome, awesome. Um, he's done an absolutely phenomenal job. I know, I remember watching, was it Monday Night Football at the beginning of the season? I think Jamie Carragher had him as a manager of the season potentially, and he's certainly not disappointed anyway. But, uh, yeah. Bournemouth, from a structural point of view, and this is what's going to do really well for the fellow that's taken over at Liverpool in the summer. You look at their budget, Bournemouth. They, they finally got it right. Like, when they come into the Premier League under Howe and all that, they come in, get relegated, they come in, get relegated. But they certainly stabilised them, um, Iriola now. Um, but, uh, yeah, we are back underway for the second half as well now, Chas. Newcastle need to see a reaction. Uh, Tottenham, sorry, need to see a reaction anyway. Um, 
Big up there, Andy. Yeah, it was a disappointing result, Andy, money. But uh, we live and we learn as a club, mate. But certainly we will be wanting a much better reaction from Liverpool in the second leg. It's never over till it's over. By Lord, no one on planet Earth would have seen Liverpool going and get through against Barcelona all those years ago. So never write this Liverpool team off. That's why we love it. The Liverpool fans. But uh, it's just the Liverpool way. We, we always leave a hard work for ourselves. Always. Whether that be for a league title, whether that be for top four, wherever it is, we always do things the hard way. Bloody hell, Istanbul. The FA Cup final, Gerrard's last minute equaliser. Sorry, West Ham fans. West Ham made still few of about that game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ivan Tony has been benched for the Sheffield United game. Uh, I'd say good. Talk in all honesty, if you're a Brentford fan, like we all know Tony's qualities, but he doesn't have. Oh, could be a. That was a tasty challenge. That this will be getting reviewed. I tell you what, it's Basuma. He's getting carded. Yeah. But I tell you what, assume he's got away with that. He's getting a yellow card. But if he's made contact with a... I think it was Madison Shin. Anyway, that would have been a straight red anyway. Thankfully for Basuma, the Tottenham player's leg wasn't planted. So didn't make much of a connection, really. Yeah, but for Ivan Tony, mate, if you're a Brentford fan, you'd be fuming. Every single interview you see... He's want he's big enough a team like Ivan Brentford to pay your wages, lads. I get you've got aspirations as a player to leave, but at least respect the parent club that you're at. Isaac, it's gonna be a corner. <coughs> Isaac should have put that in the back of the net there. In all honesty, chat ball bounces. Pedro Porro just getting a little outstretched leg there. To deny the big Swede. And it looks like on that stretch, Potter might have pulled his calf, pulled his hamstring or something. Yeah, big up there, Panar, big up Chart. Yeah. Ariola has been named manager of the month too. Was that for last month or this month? Doug? Tell you what, Bournemouth have been phenomenal this season. Absolutely phenomenal. <clears throat> Like you think about their budget and everything as a club, they are overperforming massively. But it just goes to show the good job of what the Eriola and his coaching staff are doing. Luton were great against us, though, Jack. Though, no, we were just crap. I forgot we, we like making average teams look great. True, true, there, panel. Smash a like as well, everyone. If you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on Facebook or whatnot, hit that subscribe button as well. The absolute legends. Need to see a performance from Tottenham in this second half, really, to get back into this. Obviously, top four race as well. So, porto has gone off injured. That'll be a big miss for Tottenham. And uh, Emerson Royale is coming on now. The Brazilian. And he's going to be tested straight away as well with this Newcastle corner. Gordon, ball in. Cleared at the front post. Newcastle will be looking to recycle possession now, trying to get a ball back into the penalty area. And it's a poor ball. Tottenham on the counter-attack now. Can Son get that right ball? No, it's that final ball, as we said in the first half. Again, Tottenham were on a two-on-two -two counter-attack there. And Hummin Son, disappointing with his pass selection there. Player his ability need to be getting that ball over the top. Madison would have been closing down on the goalkeeper in a one-on-one, -on -one, really. He's a ch If Richardson's on the bench here, chat. No, he's not. Oh, Debravke. Kept hold of it just. But Timo Werner has actually got a shot on target for once. 
No, it's on, lad. It's better than whacking it over the bar, lad. Emerson now. Son. Dispossessed here by Bruno Gomez. The flag's down. Isaac's bellowing down on goal. That's 3-0. I'll tell you what. It's 3-0. Is he in an offside position? I don't think he is. If he's onside there, Isaac, that is horrendous. Horrendous defending. Initially, from my point of view, didn't look offside. It was a phenomenal ball. It was an easy ball over the top of the Tottenham back line. We know the high line for Tottenham. Is he in his own half? Oh, well done, Isaac. What a ball by Bruno. But as is Ange football, it's high risk. But there's been no reward there. And I tell you what, 3-0, game set and match. And Aston Villa fans are absolutely buzzing with the news of Tottenham being 3-0 down here. If he's watched this on match of the day, horrendous, absolutely horrendous defending by Tottenham. If you're defending like that in the Premier League, you deserve to be 3 0 down. But that is poor. You can't be leaving. Mickey van der Ven on the, like, he was in his own half, but. Oh, Go and check this ball out. In the, if, you, if you're if not watching the game, <laughs> lovely ball by Bruno Gomez. The awareness to see Isaac in his own half. But ridiculous defending. It is, Liz. But I'll tell you what, that it's the first time I've actually properly sat down and watched Tottenham. I've well, watched them, obviously, when we played them. Liverpool played them, but they're just missing that link up play, but at the front, the forwards of the p the front of the pitch. Obviously, Richardson's. I think Richardson in this team would offer them so much more than having Hummin Son. His best position in the Tottenham side is down that left hand flank, but there's no there's no target man. There's no presence up there so far this afternoon or probably this season for Tottenham. When the ball goes forward. At the final fair for Tottenham, the ball just get ricochets back and then they're getting done on the counter-attack. Harry Kane done that so well. He's one of the best link-up players in the whole of Europe over the last five, six seasons. Barnes, ball in. They're appealing for handball. He's give a corner. Anderson appealing for a penalty there. It is bright, it is. It's disappointing. I tell you what. Mm. For me, he shouldn't be having his hand out there. It's been checked. No pen. Isaac, I bloody love him. We I pet, as the Geordies would say. I think there's a meeting going on at the back post there. Ref, ref, it's not about you. You're there to blow the whistle and give out cards, not a more. Ball in. Corner to Newcastle. Can he get a fourth? I tell you what, Bruno's being absolutely RKO'd at the back post there. Be interesting to see the replay. Don't think it'll be a foul anyway, but just look like Bruno's uh, feet did go below him. But yeah, it's going to be a couple of changes. And I tell you what, if you're a Tottenham fan here, you are, Kulazeski's coming on, Hoiberg's coming on, and uh, I think it's Papi, Papi Sar, is it, coming on. Doesn't fill you yet uh, with a lot of joy. The cardio, oh, they've absolutely cursed the cardio today, Chas. It's the worst of seeing them. Oh, Romero's had a... Death taxes and a Romero K 
cards in a game of football. He just loves a yellow card, doesn't he? Him and Ramos. Imagine having both of them centre half in your team. You'd finish with nine men every single week. Yeah, he's a phenomenal footballer, but as we said at the top of the show, but just kind of keep him fit. If you can keep him fit, Newcastle next season certainly will be in a in a race for top four. But you need to improve on the quality and that you've <coughs> that you've showed today as well. <coughs> King Isaac George, he's on an hat stick. He's on an hat stick, Isaac. So you anyway, probably end up with five the way Tottenham are defending today. <laughs> Isaac, oh, that should have been his hat trick. He's angry at himself as well. He's unmarked in the penalty area. Off. It's a lovely little delivery by Gordon. I think he would have been, yeah, he would have been yard or two offside there. The big Swede. Timo's off. Basuma off. Hoiberg's on. Timo. Surely Timo's coming off. I, Timo's literally waiting. Timo's waiting like when Joe and he used to go to Blockbuster. With your parents. Well, when I was younger. I'm like, Mum, I want that DVD. Timo Wayne was... See, that, that, he couldn't have got off any quicker there, Timo. Oh, wow. Son's coming off. Son's coming off. If you're a Tottenham fan, Tottenham fans around the world are absolutely screaming at the telly now. You've just took off the best player in the team. But that comes from Ange. You should be playing Son off the left-hand flank, not through the middle. I'm sorry. That's exactly where... Newcastle have had Madison all game at the edge of uh, in and around his own penalty area. I'd say what the press from Newcastle has been exceptional today, absolutely exceptional. Gordon still got half an hour to go here. Plenty more goals in this for Newcastle. Be interesting to see if Eddie Howe takes off Isaac. Surely not, but. Yeah, he is, George. He is. Yeah, he is, Will, George. You just need to reinvest that money. Champions League revenue into the squad, mate. You just need to fill out that team with a lot more quality, but and obviously move on a couple of the players that you have got in the squad as well. But as we found, it's not always easy when Klopp took over. You've got players at the club, like at Newcastle, at Liverpool, when Klopp took over, and like at many clubs as well. I'd even say at Man United as well. There's so many players in that United and Newcastle squad that need to be moved on. They're not good enough for both teams. But when you've got multi-millionaires happy and content to sit in the stands, sit in the bench as well, they'd much rather. And that is where football's gone mad. You've got these multi-millionaires on the bench. They'd much rather sit on the backside than go out and play football. I, I like... If I had the quality, like, if all of us had the quality of being a footballer, like, for me, you'd, you'd I, I personally would want to be playing football. Like, I couldn't be sitting on the bench doing nothing. But it is what it is. Ten quid for Matip. We'll save a lot of wages on Matip, though, Mark. It'd be sad to see him go. Uh, give 150 million and a player, and when you can take Isaac to your team. Ah, oh, yeah. Geordie. Geordie, how much did you sign him from Social Dad? It was a big buyout, wasn't it? Was it 70, 80 million, was it, mate? Or was that your 85 million euros or something? It was big money, I remember that. Yeah, you can keep Bruno if sales are needed for FFP. I remember we done a show a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Brennan Johnson, that's better. Oh, that is horrendous. That is absolutely horrendous. Brennan Johnson, you greedy, 
greedy man. He's literally colours esky. He's done so well, Brian Johnson. He's engineered a bit of space on the edge of penalty area. Play him in. Colours esky's through one goal with a guaranteed goal. Here's what it is. Is it around 60 million? Oh, that's a bargain, that lad. Bargain, actually. That's a bargain. Bargain. Another player that I'd love to see in terms of uh, Spanish La Liga football is the younger in a, is the younger Williams that plays for Athletic Bilbao. Not the older, not Inaki Williams, but his brother. Been interesting to see. He's very highly regarded. Any? Let's have a little look at this. I tell you what, that's dangerous play by Madison. This could be a red card here. For me, that's a red card. Madison, he's very fortunate if he escapes a red card here. He's got studs in the back of him. A Tottenham midfielder. Ridiculous. No check on VAR. Ah, oh, these refs. That was a Liverpool player, studs up. Well, oh, would have sent all the, all the whole team off. Madison, you lucky boy. Yeah, Nico. Yeah, Nico Williams. Be interesting to see where he goes. I'm pretty sure that knowing the Spanish clubs, he'll have a big buyout clause. Certainly a big buyout clause. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh! I tell you what, Anderson. <laughs> I slagged off Anderson before this game, but he's been very good today. Very good. Tell you what, Harvey Barnes and Gordon have it's it's a masterclass of wing play by those two lads today from Newcastle. It's absolutely phenomenal. Ah, oh, this referee. Why is he giving the ball to the ball boy? The ball's off the pitch. Oh, look at me, I'm on telly. Premier League ref for you. There's a shove in the back there. Big damn burn there. Got the dance moves, Annie. He? Hasn't quite got the editing ability there. Oh, so it's going to be another corner for Newcastle. I'll tell you what, this has been one of the worst performances I've seen Tottenham. This season, so poor. It's been all Newcastle. It's going to be Gordon with an in-swinger. Or an out-swinger, sorry. Gordon now. He's picked up that second ball transition. Gordon. Oh, I couldn't quite find. Harvey Barnes. That was a poor ball by Ricky van der Ven. Anderson. He's still got it. Anderson needs a bit of support. He's found Gordon. Gordon and Harvey Barnes. I've just picked his up, boys. Don't be putting balls in the box like that, lads. Come on. Come on. That's it. He'll finish. He's ice cold. The, the, the cat. I'm telling you now. If he stays fit, Isaac, he's one of the best finishers in the whole of Europe. He is. For me. Like, when you see him, is all of his finishes seem so calm and composed. He doesn't even look up. He knows exactly where the ball, like, the, the goals, the goal is. Madison. Like, even these subs. I don't get the subs. Kulazeski. Tottenham not playing without a striker. They're literally not playing with a striker today. He desperately. Here's a question for you, chat. Any Tottenham fans or general football fans? Does Madison get in Southgate's World Cup squad? For me, if he plays like today, no. I'm picking Parmet. I'm picking Foden. I'm picking. Who else? Saka. Yeah. 
due to, yeah, it's, no, Madison for me gets nowhere near that England squad for the Euros. No way. I know he's been injured as well. That's you got to take that into account as well with Madison. But top goal scorers in the Premier League this season. Isaac, 70. Is Isaac, where did that come from? He's got 17 goals this season. Fair play. That just goes to show, um, we know the shocking record Newcastle have got in terms of, you've got, you've scored a lot of goals, but you've certainly conceded. It's just, like with a lot of teams in the Premier League, trying to break into that top four. Obviously, we know Newcastle were in Champions League this season, but it's just trying to get that consistency, getting a strong foundation defensively and being consistent at the back. But uh, Isaac, if they can keep him fit next season, certainly should be easily in contention for a top four spot. And if Gordon and Harvey Barnes play like they have done today, you've got every chance. But then you need the players to come in from, from a new Newcastle perspective. You've got... Um, Almond on, he's all right, he's a good player, but if you ask any Newcastle fan, heart of heart, you, 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 you probably love Almond on as a player, as a person as well, but in terms of the quality, Newcastle, they need to improve on the likes of Almond on and the other players on the peripheral of that squad as well. So, pursue it, Madison. Like Madison there, you need to be asking more from him as well. I say that, and he's played a lovely ball to find Kulazewski there. That's more like it, Madison. See, actually, sorry, chat. I thought Timo went off. He didn't. Timo didn't go off. Must have been getting a proper telling off by Ange. That's mad. It's mad that Ange has left Timo on and took Son off. Tottenham fans are probably screaming at that like, but I know Son didn't have the best game, but Son's got that individual quality. When a matter of seconds, a brief half a second spell on the penalty area, he'll, he'll put it in the back of the net. It wasn't for the injuries. It would be, uh, we would, yeah, certainly there, Geordie, but that's where Liverpool over the last couple of years as well, like we said at the top of the show, when we, when we were playing Hendo and Fabinho at the back, like, like we had our injuries, and that's where I still think Liverpool need to improve in the quality as well. Um, in terms of like the fringe players, obviously, with the youngsters uh are doing so well for us, but I think we can loan a couple of them youngsters out to like a couple of the lower league, lower teams in the Premier League. I don't want them seeing like I don't want Dan's to go to like League Two, I want to see Dan's go to a, a top level either championship sides or a bottom team in the Premier League where he's guaranteed minutes, guaranteed better development as well. But it's just all about the recruitment for every team in the Premier League, even Manchester City as well, because there will come a time and a day and a season where Kevin De Bruyne no longer can do what he used to do in a Manchester City shirt. That's better. Undoggy's breaking through here. Not exactly the player you want through. Tottenham, edge the penalty area. And Madison again. He's he's played so poor today. Madison. Yeah, in a bit, Madison. Decides to shoot, sums up his game today. But like you think there's going to be a, a, a time where I think you move on Bernardo Silva City. There's been a lot of talk over the last couple of years. Would he go to Barcelona or another team in La Liga? So City will have a reshuffle. Their quality won't go away because the, their, their overall squad is quality. But the, the, the recruitment is so integral. You look at Tottenham, you look at Newcastle, you look at Liverpool as well, the new manager. Liverpool need to get the recruitment right. Even though we have done in previous seasons, but we've just got to be consistent as well. Like, because you can spend, look at Chelsea, chat. Ball in, Tottenham. Madison, ball in. Sound Kulazeski. Good defender by Dan Byrne. They're just not moving. They haven't done that so at all well today, Tottenham. That's where the difficulties 
have a rose, really. Just getting in and around the penalty area. That ball needs to be getting fizzed around so much more quicker. One or two passing, really. What oh, He took too many pass touches in and around the penalty area today, Tottenham. Yeah, hoi big. And I've got to, got, to, got to applaud Newcastle as well today. Really pressed him so well. Royal Emerson, that's never a foul, lads. Behave. Like the 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 out of possession Newcastle, exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. You've, you've won the ball back. But this is where, probably for Newcastle fans as well, you might agree. So Newcastle, big win against Tottenham. But it's those teams, like, for example, when you play Sheffield, when you play Burnley away from home, when you play um, Brentford on the last game of the season, it's those games where you need to win. Of course, like, similar with Liverpool, when we watch our games, we always perform, usually. I know our record against the top six over the last 12 months hasn't been the best, Um but usually Liverpool turn up in the big games. Like like every team, really. When you play the big boys, when Brighton play United, Brentford play United and all that, vice versa. But it's 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 when the difficulty for a lot of teams outside the top four or teams wanting to break into that top four, and that's speaking from experience, pre Jürgen Klopp, when we had Brendan Rodgers. Christ, that's a flashback. Um, but it's it's just consistency, really. Like, winning when you're expected to win is the most difficult thing in football. And, of course, you've got to fundamentally have the quality as well in your team. But that's where I think teams do struggle. It's where Villa have done so well. Their home record this year has been phenomenal. Like, Cousins ask you where you're going, love. You're nearly giving away the ball on the penalty, extra penalty here today. Yeah. Jack, we say 115 charges, but more than salty. What have been the race is a few years, so we want them gone. Hey, Red Machine. I don't want them to eradicate it because let's not forget the, the diehard City fans when they were in League One and League Two and, and Everton. Like the the proper city fans, like that have travelled home and away, like they have got an amazing, good, great core. I, I don't buy into this notion; it's a cheap notion, really. I know we joke about it, but when you deep it and you analyse it, City's core of core supporters is one of the best in England. Like if you think about it, I think they had like was it thirty five, forty thousand in League One or League Two. It was amazing support. Like, you look at Leeds United as well, when they were in the Championship and the lower leagues, big core. That's what makes English football amazing. I love it. Like, even Fratton Park as well, a historic team like that, Portsmouth. They had big, big, um, big attendance as well in, like, League One and League Two and that. So... But it is, it's it's the thing, it's always going to be the case. Whatever happens in football, it's always the fans that get punished. Whether it's City, the Chelsea fans, the Liverpool, whoever it is, in terms of like these owners, these chief executives that don't really care about the average football fan or just football fans in general. Like they are custodians of the clubs. The fans for the next 200, 500 Thousand years will always still be there. The fans will be supplying these football clubs with funds, with shirts, merchandise as well. But too quickly, these like you look at was it bet yeah, Betty. Like the God forbid the Betty fans didn't have a clue who owned their football club. And their club disappeared. Like anyone, like the fit and proper persons test. As an owner, if it was done properly and regulated properly, it would have worked. But you're telling me you trust in the championship, the football league, the Premier League to really enforce the well, the rules and the regulations.
Because was it um, a shot? Who was the um, the owner before the Abu Dhabi takeover for City? Because they had it difficult as well before them as well. Because there's been some terrible owners. Terrible owners. That have absolutely destroyed football clubs. Football clubs, regardless of who you support, you look forward to watching your footy at the weekend. Like, like I like my gaming, but football, Liverpool goes above and beyond everything. As I said, Liverpool were playing on my wedding day. I'd probably go and watch the Champions League final. Sorry. Um, <laughs> like, I bet there'd be plenty of people out there as well. Like, football, I love it. We all love football. But it's only a couple of... Um, couple of poor decisions in the boardroom for any club, for that matter, to be very quickly done. Whether that be points deduction, seeping into, going into League One, going into League Two, and then disappearing off the, the football pyramid. Sad, really. Was this in a watch here? Disappointing. <laughs> 47 of the current 92 clubs have been in administration at some points. Yeah, that that is that is exactly what I'm talking about. But a great statistic. Well, not a great statistic, but that just highlights exactly what we we all know. But it's disappointing. It's sad, really, mate. Because I, I know how much football means to. I know we're Liverpool fans, but just the bright the the broader scope in in football, really. Yeah, but for them to declare managers won't know what's going on. Yeah, Mark, there has been some absolute car crash managing spells. Look at us with George and uh, George and uh, Hicks and Gillette. Like, if Rafa was given this prime Liverpool team, like that we've got currently now, or like when Mane and, and Bobby and that were there, he would have loved it, but. He was literally having to sell Xavi Alonso for Gareth Barry or a player of that quality. Like, we knew the situation at the time. We needed to sell players to buy. We were sold to buy club. And people might go, we still are at the minute, but you can't turn down 100 and something stupid million from Barca for Casino. It wasn't worth that at all. Highly talented footballer, but not 140 million. But when you've got a club willing to pay that, then you sell them on every day of the week. And and say if a say if a stupid bid, and I say a stupid bid comes in for Sally, where in the summer it's like he's got a year left on his contract. Oh, and and we can't be turning down two hundred million. If it got to it where it was one hundred fifty, two hundred million pounds for Sally, for as much as I love him, for as much as we all love him. That could do a lot for the development of the new coach coming in. It could bring in three, four, five players, really, to revolutionise this Liverpool side, even into greater heights as well. Sorry, Chas. I know we've been rambling, but you haven't missed much. It's been a, a bit of nothing from Tottenham. It's been a large spell of Newcastle possession, really, the last 10 minutes. Yeah, it's done absolutely nothing. It's been all it's been all Newcastle. I've really enjoyed watching this game uh, from Newcastle. Been phenomenal. And you play like this, take this on to the next couple of games. You never know, never know what Villa would do. Never know what Tottenham would do in the race for top four. It's never over till it's over. We've got to play Tottenham, Liverpool, Arsenal. Got to play Tottenham. Got big games starting them on, on the way. Whoa! Off the post there. Is that Livermento? Oh no, it was a craft. Yeah, I think it was craft the centre half. The end of that. Un unlucky lad. Bit of a weird one. It was a bouncing one. Now he's hit that into the ground. Oh, 
Vicario is done here. And uh, sarcastically, the Tottenham fans. <coughs> oh, yeah, Madison. Uh, yeah, wasn't the Tottenham fans. It was the Newcastle fans. Jeed and James Madison, as you'll understand. Heavily linked with Newcastle on the summit. I still don't... I do not know how Lo Celso doesn't get a game for Tottenham. Like, I don't know. I think with a right manager... I like him as a player. Don't be wrong, he's not like um like that top bracket, but I, I think there's a there's a player in there. Red Machine, good luck trying to, as we were saying to Jordi and the Newcastle fans tuning in today. No chance getting him. Oh I tell you what, a centre half I've loved in the Premier League for a very long time. It's Fabian Shah. Like, you think of the money that they signed them for. It was like five, two, four million, whatever it was. Highly underrated. It's a shame for Newcastle that he's, what, 29, 30? <clears throat> Does the job of the experienced Switzerland international as well. I think he's Swiss. But very, very underrated, in my, in my opinion. He's a proper, proper leader as well at the back there, number five. <laughs> we are a Tottenham fan. You, you, you are asking your questions after this game. Where did he go from here? Tottenham, obviously, still in a very good position in the league. It's exactly where he wanted to be. But I think if you, if you have another couple of sh 90 minutes, <clears throat> shall wins like this could get really tricky for Tottenham. Especially we've got Tottenham coming to Anfield as well. That's going to make it even more difficult need, knowing that new Tottenham need a win at Anfield as well. Hopefully they come to Anfield and play that stupid high line that they have done today. Well, we know that's a, a hallmark of Ange Ball. High risk, but high damage in behind as well. If that uh, high line does get bypassed. So a big corner, first corner for Tottenham, which feels like a very long time. Oh, sorry there, chat. I can never see Alonso getting another. Ch he will, Matt. He will. Saying this to Connor off air as well, mate, and the lads. Alonso will manage Liverpool one day, but it won't be in the next five, six years. I think he will go to Real Madrid first. And then when Real Madrid have a little tricky spell or a little wobble, you, you know what Real Madrid are like. But Real Madrid, it works. Like, look at Zidane. Three Champions Leagues, Ancelotti. Ancelotti will go down as one of the greatest managers ever in football. He's the master. The master of the eyebrow. I did it. Oh! <laughs> you cannot make this up. Timo's about 10 yards offside anyway. But even when he's offside, when he's literally five yards off, he still can't control the ball. I don't know. Timo Werner in the Bundesliga... And then Timo in the Premier League. Is it a body double or something? Because this isn't the Timo Werner that was in the Bundesliga. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no Foden and Rodri. Yeah, it's they'll, they'll, they'll slap them all over the gaff, mate. They'll have them. Like, I love Rico Lewis as well. Very. Uh, shame he plays for City, but... Very, he's a very good player. Very good youngster. Yeah, yeah, it's plenty of time, as Bryce said there, for the next 25, 30 years, of course, he'll, he'll get another chance. Sometimes time is evident in football. And I'm pretty sure, a lot. I think Alonso, the back of his mind, he knows that he'll... Barnes, 
Those pants, mister. Oh, no, it was Gordon, sorry. I tell you what, that was a Harvey Barnes with a lovely through ball. I tell you what. Chat, who are you giving man of the match to here? I think you'd say you've got to give it to Isaac for the goals. But for me, Gordon. Gordon and uh, Harvey Barnes. I I'd give my man of the match to Harvey Barnes. I think he's been exquisite. I know Isaac's got the goals, but when he's been on the ball, Barnes, and when he's been off the ball in terms of possession, running statistics and everything, he's been exceptional. Yeah, chat. Isaac, yeah. The main one would be Isaac for man in the match, but I think from my personal view, I've just... Ah, oh, 4-0! Fabian Schaus waxing lyrical about his qualities. And that just sums up Tottenham's defending today. Unmarked. You've just let a centre-half in the Premier League get a leap on you there. And the Geordies will be celebrating on the town this weekend. Easy, easy win. But they've made it look easy, Newcastle. Very good performance. But Tottenham have been abysmal. They've been absolutely head-enders. Like, I'm sorry... Premier League, is that Kulizewski? He hasn't got a Scooby-Doo where Fabian Shard is behind him. And there we go. As I was applauding Shard's qualities. That's certainly what he can do in the penalty area as well. Can't half strike a ball as well. He scored a couple of screamers in his Newcastle career. But uh, I think long way all the way back to White Hart Lane for the Tottenham fans. And if you're a Tottenham fan, travelling all that way to Newcastle, you'll be furious. It's not been good enough today. But what a performance by Newcastle. Yeah, 4-0. Red Machine 4-0 Palace. Hopefully, mate. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we will be live at 7pm um, today. Chat. Hopefully, I do see you there as well. Looking forward to that. Um, pre-match build-up show and obviously we'll have a watch along tomorrow as well for our game say well what a performance by Harvey Burns yeah it was Mark but chat, if you haven't already done so, smash a like, smash a subscribe as well. <clears throat> if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or whatnot, welcome to the channel. I know we're a Liverpool channel, but we do love our football. I'm gutted I didn't do a watch long on the uh, Champions League first leg chat. Apologies, I didn't do that. We'll definitely do one for the second leg, but watch the second legs be so boring now. Yeah, so this win for Newcastle puts them on 50 points. The 10 points behind Villa and the 10 points behind Tottenham. I know it's a lot, but don't write this Newcastle side off. All in cleared. So we've got a minute left as well. But yeah, we'll be live today. If you don't get your notifications, chat, we will be live on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. UK time, GMT, for the pre-match build-up show. Want to get your thoughts and opinions? Less of me, more of you is getting your thoughts on your start 11s. What you want to be seeing Liverpool going forward into that game tomorrow in what is another must-win. We know our job in hand. We need to win every single game till now and the end of the season. Yeah, as the uh, machine said there, Newcastle 6, Spurs 1 last season as well. That embarrassing two losses, more than four goals at St. James's for Spurs. Yeah, it's just... Might be just, you know, when City go to... When, when Pep Guardiola comes up against Tottenham, he absolutely hates Tottenham as well, doesn't he? Like, but I think City would do the job against Tottenham this season. Because the main thing is Tottenham... 
Yeah, I know it's quite obvious you do as well, but when you miss a player of the quality of Harry Kane, he was Mr. Tottenham. Like, even, I don't think Son's even, Son's not even been the player that uh, we've seen when he was playing alongside Harry Kane. Like, if I'm Son, I'm looking to move away from Tottenham. I know he's the, he's, I think Son's the, Son the captain of Tottenham. I think he is, isn't he? But what is Son now? 29, 30. He's maybe got one last big move in him. But if he's happy not winning trophies at Tottenham, then fair enough. Chat, that's one player that I wish if we had our time back. Well, saying that, no, because we had Sadio Mane. But if we lived in another parallel universe and Liverpool didn't have Sadio Mane, I would have loved Liverpool to have signed Hoi Min Son. <sighs> Over the last five, six years, he's been a, been a, such a good player. Is that Timo offside again? Oh, he's embarrassing. Timo winning it. That is like the 10th, 50th time. Chat, can someone find out how many times Timo's been offside here today? It's not an exaggeration. It's like watching Darwin Nunes for us. Offside every single time. Five minutes added on here, chat. <clears throat> oh, Romero. Oh, Brazil versus Argentina. Kicking off here. Romero, lad, you done a yellow card, can't we? Three minutes added on here. We played two of the allotted. Okay, five minutes added on. We played two of the allotted. <clears> that a good game, Bruno. Very good game. Jack and Mark, I think he will. He should. Well, if you haven't already done so, drop a like on the video as well, Reds. We will be live later at 7 p.m. GMT. The pre-match build-up show. Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. It's going to be difficult. It'll be interesting to see how we do fit. That means shit. No, oh, Paul Dummett. Paul Dummett, who last week gave away a stupid penalty in what could have been and what might be a very pivotal loss of two points come what the end of the season. Paul Dummett's been there since Mike Ashley days as well, hasn't he? It's part of the furniture at Newcastle. It does. It does, machine. It does. And that's what you want. Well, thing is, mate, thing is, chat, we've just got to focus on ourselves. Because at this minute in time, I know, obviously, we played bad against Atalanta, but we've just got to focus on ourselves. Let those other teams do what they want to do. And even if they do drop points, Liverpool need to capitalise on that in the next couple of weeks as well. We've just got to focus on ourselves. It's mad though, Newcastle. Did he, did he pay £30 million for Lewis Hall? Which is mad. I just wish, well, is he offside? Lip him? No, he's on there. Like I say, a massive thank you to everyone that has tuned in today as well, everyone. You're absolute legends. Really do appreciate it, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Dropping a like as well if you haven't done so. And put your bell notification on as well on the on the channel on Facebook or YouTube or whatnot to keep up to date on all videos when they do go live. <clears throat> Be a for you, big lad. Never going in that. Never going in. But obviously, Hoiberg was linked with a move away from Tottenham in the window just gone as well in January, which was a bit mad. Well, 
I tell you what, considering all the injuries Newcastle have got in their team, this is a very, very good result. A nice full time, big win for Newcastle. Keeps their hopes of a top four finish still alive. I know a lot of people might write them off, but Tottenham will drop points in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months anyway. Still plenty of football to go. Villa need to win as well. So all, all to play for here as well. But uh, they're all fuming at the end of the game. Don't know why, but chat, massive, massive thank you to every single one of you that has tuned in today. Have a, if I don't see you later today, there'll be a video on the uh, post-match. Uh, well, we'll have a live stream tomorrow and uh, obviously a pre-match build-up show tonight at 7pm. If you're going out or out and about this weekend, have a lovely rest of your weekend, whatever you're up to. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later today. But a uh, massive thank you to everyone in the comments today. Loads of you today, which is absolutely amazing. Lovely to see. Great to see. But uh, see you again at 7 today. Let's look after yourself.